The book The Patriot Bard is about the worldview and beliefs of the Scottish bard, Robert Burns. There's no greater icon within Scottish culture than Robert Burns, and to write a reappraisal of his life and views is a daring and controversial act. Everyone in Scotland knows something about Burns, and there are many self-dubbed experts in the bard. So the Patriot Bard will stir a lot of debate and publication. However, as Burns wrote, I do not care three farthings for commentators and authorities, an honest, candid inquirer after the truth I revere. Um, it started initially as, as an investigation to just find out some more material about the, the Scottish Bard for an immortal memory at a Burns supper speech about two years ago. And reading through some of the older poems, the more obscure poems and songs, I mean, he was famous for writing 36 poems in the Kilmarnock edition, and yet there's over 700 odd works. And I found that some of the traditional ideas about Burns that, that people have now, in my opinion, you know, when I first started looking into what he was really like as a person, I wanted to get a feel for what he was like. So I could imagine him being like here with us now. What sort of man was this bloke that everyone in Scotland knows something about, and yet, you know, we, half of it's mythology. And, you know, that's mixed up with fact. I wanted to unravel the, the myth from the fact. I found that the original ideas and sort of hunch that I had was that there were bits and pieces missing out of the biographies generally in order not to offend people's politics or people's different views of the time. Francis Dunlop Lop um, was a member of the Wallace family from New Eastern Ryan, the village of Cairn Ryan. She corresponded with Burns for 10 years and one of the interesting facts that came out of that was um, a letter in November of 1790 where she quoted back to Burns um, saying, I received this anonymous letter and um, no other poet other than you could have written this. And it was a quote from what's now known as Tamashanter. And I contrasted that with the actual edition which came out in the Edinburgh magazine of 1791 in March, which shows that he reworked that poem and it sort of destroys the idea that he wrote it in one day. It's sort of evidence that, that Burns wrote Thomas Hunter in five months instead of just one day. Another interesting local issue of contention is where exactly Robert Burns wrote Scots Swahe, the Scottish National Anthem. It's believed, um, according to local folklore, that, that Burns wrote this en route from Kenmuir to um, the Murray Arms and Gatehouse of Fleet. Now this is based on the reminiscences of John Syme who went with Burns on his first gallery tour. Now there's, there's two beliefs, one is that he wrote it en route or was composing it en route and the second one which seems to be accepted as fact is that he actually composed it in the Murray Arms in Gatehouse of Fleet. Both of these, um, I argue in the Patriot Bard, are completely and utterly wrong based on a letter that Burns wrote after um, the first gallery tour where Burns met Urbani, the Italian composer, and it was f from meeting Urbani that he was prompted to write um, soft lyrics for the tune Hey Tutti Tutti. And after that, and going back to Dumfries, Burns wrote a letter which said, this thought in my yesternight's evening walk warmed me to a pitch of enthusiasm on the theme of liberty and independence, which I threw into a kind of Scots ode. Then he says, the accidental recollection of that glorious struggle for freedom we must remember this was written in Dumfries, and he goes on to say, associated with the glowing ideas of some other struggles of the same nature, not quite so distant, roused my rhyming mania. This letter was written on the 30th of August 1793 and is the primary factual evidence that proves Scots Wahi was not written in the Murray Arms. Unravelling myth and folklore is one of the most difficult things in writing on Burns, as he himself peddled a few myths about himself. For instance, that he was a heaven-taught ploughman. The truth is that his so-called rustic muse was a very intellectual muse, only that he chose to write of common everyday life and breathe life into the culture of the Scottish peasantry by making the common, honest working peasant his dramatic hero. Burns has now become a mirror to Scottish identity and culture. We can look at ourselves and see the Kailyard myths, or we can begin to see ourselves as we are. The Patriot Bard begins a wider debate on the man and his worldview that it may rescue Burns from the mythology of blind worship to the reality of his honest genius as a thinker and as a writer. Now we get